connections are profound, deep spiritual bonds that many believe connect two souls. However, not all twin flame experiences are genuine. There is a concept of false light twin flames connections that appear divine but lack the true depth and purpose of a genuine twin flame union. We decided to share this information while preserving my client's anonymity. During the session I used my unique methods to assist my client to reach a vibrational state which allowed him to connect with the fragments of his higher self, his male high self. This extraordinary session brings forth insight that may challenge conventional beliefs and ideas surrounding twin flames, timelines, and the concept of false light. While some of the information shared might be controversial, it's crucial to approach it with an open mind. Every soul's journey is unique, and what resonates with man might not resonate with another. The primary intent behind sharing the session is to aid seekers in their journey, allowing them to better navigate the complex realms of spiritual connections and timelines. Always trust your intuition, discern the information that comes forth, and hold on to what resonates with your soul's truth. He just wants to give some historical context um, All right. that the pharaoh Akhenaten, um, he was uh, an enlightened being that uh, incarnated in order to put a stop to these um, ritual sacrifice, oh. which is the reason why he uh, tried to, yeah, he tried to um, get rid of the or stop the worship of the pantheon of the pantheon of gods and bring it back to the one creator god. It basically means uh, uh, serving the law of one, but that didn't go down well. Yeah, yeah, right. The sacrifices. So basically, the sacrifices um, were there for the dark Orions, you know, um, yes, the Grace, yeah. you know, Draco, so, many Draco. Yes. So uh, under the there were. It's disguised as the pantheon of gods, but have like uh, AI projections. Oh, mm -hmm. pantheon. So, uh, is, so you know, I, I mean, is ISIS like a, a projection, AI projection? Uh, e, yes, he's saying yes. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Is that uh, many people think they are incarnated as ISIS, but this is not fully true. It's more so that there is a cloned false light ascended master projected into their light body. As mm. we're all ascended masters, we are not of one, so to speak. So to believe that you are ISIS is giving your power away. Well, I thought like ISIS can incarnate into about 2,000 people, you know. Mm. But anyhow, so they're saying, he's saying ISIS is, you know, an AI product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whenever, you know, ISIS was asked for like benediction or whatever, so how is this then interpreted by the dark side? So to speak, so um, the the projection of ISIS will assist those as long as they're unaware of the other aspects of energy siphoning and uh, creation of a false reality, another false reality, so to speak. So, so nothing uh, good comes from, from, you know, asking like, those beings and you pay with life force for it? Uh, yes, you're far better calling on your own highest aspect, which is usually nameless. Mm -hmm. Call on your own highest. Okay. And usually, what the way you can call on it is call on your Christos avatar. Mm -hmm. 
my own <laughs> Christos Avatar. So basically yeah. your own Christed being, which is mm -hmm. free from any uh, human intellectual beliefs or basi basically uh, uh, entrapment through unaware oh. of uh, universal manipulations, so to speak. Yeah, conditioning, right. Yes. Very, yeah. very good. Mm -hmm. And so the male high self that you're talking to is more like a step-down version of this crystal avatar, is that correct? Yes, yeah, because the crystal avatar, so to speak, is um, free from the gender polarity. It is everything. You're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also that you shouldn't be afraid of the... It's, it's a step in the accession, ascension process that do not fear or calling on you know, if you have called on ISIS or any other being, that is just a step to eventually calling on yourself. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, there are beings like Krishna and others, you know, ETs that have incarnated here, I mean, that are considered like gods, right? Mm -hmm. And they are not AI created. Is that correct? Or there might be, you know, false beings as, you know, created by AI. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, there are some faults, but um, for example, your processes of raising your vibration mm -hmm. uh, gets rid of interacting with the false light. Oh, yeah, it cuts it out. Yeah. Yeah. And then t testing with source love also cuts them out, right? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, you know, because when Mother Mary come, I mean, this is pure love, you know. I mean, this doesn't mm -hmm. look like an AI to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and is there a real person ISIS? Or is it just a false ISIS? Uh, he's saying there was a false ISIS, that there was an a, a original pantheon, an old pantheon, so old Egypt, mm -hmm. that uh, they were be benevolent. They were malevolent and benevolent, but they were benevolent gods, so to speak, mm -hmm. that interacted with the society. But the the pantheon of Isis and Horus and the well-known pantheon, mm -hmm. most of them are AI projected clones. So I would say in so many lifetimes, um, you know, was uh, basically led around by the nose, right? In, mm -hmm. in most lifetimes, you know, when we were spiritual, you know, we must have worshipped AI. You yeah. know, and made deals and contracts. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge deception, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so let's see. Um, so, you, you know, if Luke <laughs> has 100% obstacles, you know, in waking up, you know, contracts, karma, whatever it is, mm -hmm. out, of, out of those 100%, how much would be caused, you know, by you know, worshipping those fake God illusions and making deals or asking for help and stuff like this? Uh, 68%. So that's huge. Thing. Yeah. And so uh, there must be ways, you know, of having this reversed. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? And first of all, so these 60 percent, it's, you know, maybe this also kind of correlates to incarnations, you know, so that a high percentage. So those beings, you know, those aspects of us that worship those called false AI gods, mm -hmm. are they stuck or did they make it into the heavens or did they make it into false heavens? Yeah, false heavens. Mm -hmm. They're in false heavens and the, the energies are being harvested there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is one of Luke's main um, reason for this incarnation to redirect into the organic timelines. This heavens going into false heavens. Mm -hmm. How much is still left from those sixty percent? How much is it down? You know? uh, it's twenty percent and closing. And closing. No, so this goes automatically. Mm -hmm. What kind of effect is it going to have on? Uh, not being led into artificial timelines, being able to determine what is organic and what is uh, manipulation. Mm. So this is also, you know, a big artificial timelines, mm -hmm. a big thing. Mm -hmm. So um, 
how would an artificial timeline in a work out compared to you know, an organic one? Give us a you know a clear example. So, for example, kind of it to correlates into uh, a lot of people who think they have uh, who think that they they are they are bonded with their twin flame, but that is not the case. So that is uh, the main one of the main uh, obstacles that humanity entirety is facing. So, for example, being led into another timeline with a false gender twin. Ooh. There's a misconception within the spiritual com community what is a twin flame because the twin flame process is within and once a union is a cause within, well, then the likelihood of someone matching your genetic template your DNA template may appear, but if that process is not um, fully uh, healed and redirected, you're usually corded to uh, Anunnaki or Draco projection who wants to distort your template. Hmm. So, I mean, is this a meeting that your twin flame or your so-called twin flame in the physical? Or is it just a dream of a twin flame? You know, oh yeah, there is a twin flame on the ass. I haven't met him yet or her yet. Mm. Uh, so it's both. So you kind of, uh, the, uh, the way the false light works is that they'll cord you in the astral. And it's very important to note that in the astral, your true twin flame will never, or your gender twin, or your just your count, uh, divine counterpart, so to speak, will never actually have sexual relations with you in the astral. Because that's just the that rule has been thrown out the window through to the deception used by the the dark, the lower astral entities. So mm. it's about cultivating your heart chakra. That's how you'll know. And it's the it'll be if you if you're accorded to a false twin, so to speak, it'll be an unhealthy bond in the 4D heart chakra and 2D sacral, so a very strong sexual and unhealthy heart connection. So uh, not of love, just uh, what many are calling the, you know, uh, narc narcissistic um, bondage. But that's the people are saying that that is part of the twin flame process. It's not your twin flame will never be narcissistic. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very sexual, very sexual and that no uh, disturbed heart chakra. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I said the when you're when you have a meeting with your true divine counterpart or someone that matches your template, so to speak, because it's just all about someone who matches your template. That um, there will just be a complete inner peace between the two. There won't be an overly charged energy of any kind so to speak, you'll just be able to hold more energy together, but there won't be an unhealthy bond in any way. <laughs> it's really that so that's um, a lot of people are called are caught in that trap at the moment. Mm -hmm. action, very yeah. And yeah, the, the reason for that is to um, just to completely derail your ascension process. You know how to smell like, a, you know, getting into an artificial timeline. Anything that the um, directs them away from. From uh, the heart chakra, basically, is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So anything that uh, fuels the lower mind. Mm -hmm. oh, so a lot. big thing for a lot of males, the, the easiest way for males to get pulled back into the matrix, so to speak, would be through lust. Yeah, so basically porn, you know, and then probably also, you know, action movies, right? Yes, and um, even so as you raise in vibration, as you become a more Christed being, the negative side may try and, you know, um, direct uh, well what what he calls a false light twin but it's basically a, a projected uh, twin uh, under the direction of the demonic entity Lilith 
Oh. And what basically that what happens is that a lot of men succumb to this due to the outward beauty. But what happens is something is taken from you. Your your template is distorted and it takes a long time to heal this or it derail derails your process in terms of it just redirects your mission. Mm -hmm. So yes, so a big thing for and for other males would be to um, fully uh, disconnect from the mind control of lust. Yeah, that's uh, hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, it's all just a balance because all lust is is an overcharged energy of uh, giving your energy away through different means. It's it, for it, it's. Um, there's a lot of historical context why this is in place, such as uh, the breeding programs and like such things as that. It's artificially, you know, enticed, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they just like to explain how um, the mechanism of a uh, holographic twin flame works, like a, in a false twin flame. So the the negative extraterrestrials use the the demonic the, the demonic hierarchy to um, what's the word? So to kind of contain everyone within this illusion. So they use the two uh, entities, uh, Azazel and Lilith. So they are divine. Well, they're not divine counterparts. They are demonic counterparts, and their job is to bring people into um, you know false unions. So to speak, but the the device that is put onto the light body is called a a seven a seven D inverted ray, which affects primarily the third eye. So it kind of makes like a an inward um what like the vortex goes in the wrong way, so that you're looking at a holographic timeline, but you can't differentiate what is holographic and what isn't. And it creates an uh, inappropriate bond, bond at the heart and a very strong sexual connection because these demonic entities feed off the, the inorganic sexual lust. How would you define inorganic sexual lust? Well, uh, for example, without, uh, without unconditional love, for example, the People who are uh, stuck in this container will usually have like a despair in their heart to have to be with their twin flame. Well, that isn't unconditional love. That's a bondage. But they have a very strong sexual connection, but it isn't a twin flame connection. It's more so that you're kind of bonded to a demon, if you can think of it in that way. Now, in a real twin flame connection, you know, where there is a full heart chakra blazing, Mm -hmm. Is there also um, sexual uh, lust uh, available and present? Yes, it is, it's strong sexual energy, but it isn't in terms of you can't control it, so to speak. It is very strong, but the, the main uh, difference is there's a extreme unconditional love for one another and a connection through all chakras. But of course, sexual energy is very powerful. So there is a strong sexual bond, but it isn't just a sexual bond. That's how yeah. you can differentiate between a, a holographic and a organic, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Yeah. For any you know newly awakened person, uh, the first thing that kind of needs to be addressed, whether they know it or not, is they're called the crucifixion implants that go up along the left side of the body and block the feminine energy. Mm. Um, just yeah, just so the the name can be said and then it can be. Mm -hmm. uh, cleared if yeah okay so let's say is, is still affected by the crucifixion implant yes or no no but then he but he was affected in this lifetime yeah but see the way uh, these implants work they're in the planetary body so any being that is born in earth inherits them so they have to be removed to uh continue the ascension process so to speak they're kind of there to kind of again sabotage the mm -hmm. the higher frequencies 
Um, how does the crucifixion um, implant work? So you're saying in principle it cuts you off from the goddess aspect, from your female aspect. I have many clients, especially women that have problems with their left side. So what yeah. are the other effects? You know, how do you can diagnose this uh, the, implant this area? Yeah, so the big um would be pain in certain centers along the left or even outbreaks of like um, some sort of disease like shingles, for example. They're mainly located along the left side of the skull, the left neck, uh, in the heart itself, and down the left side of the meridians, particularly back of the knee. But they're, they're la located in different places for people, but it's always usually in the left side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's the female sign, yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. And um, just uh, ask that the crucifixion implant be removed, this will give permission. Now, how does the crucifixion implant, you know, how did it affect life in principle? Yeah, so at the start of his awakening, it, um, it triggered um, inorganic disease in the body. Uh, so particularly the one that was on the left side of the of the neck, so it's in the aorta artery, but it, it affected the flow into the thyroid indirectly. So it's designed just to kind of sabotage you in any way possible, whether that be a mental disturbance or a physical. So it manifests in different ways for people, but um, yeah, as long as um, you ask for that to be removed and any booby traps along with that, it will be removed very safely because the the guides uh, know or know how to remove these. They're doing it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, are there any um, you know, probably everybody is wondering, you know, how much they have it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, what are the emotional symptoms of somebody with a crucifixion implant? Yeah. So it's kind of uh, suffering. In any sort of way and it's kind of like a martyrdom consciousness or a savior consciousness so it's it's kind of related to the timeline when uh, christ was crucified um that's uh, so the anunnaki implanted these in the planetary body through these through uh, grid work so that any being would uh, any being born would have these implants in them to basically uh to keep to keep them dying, not because eventually humans are not meant to die. Yeah, I, actually, my realization was also that any Christ consciousness that incarnated mm -hmm. on this planet got crucified, you know, exactly. symbolically yeah. at least. I mean, suffered yes. nailed, nailed yeah. to the yeah. cross by the dark side in, in every lifetime, pretty much. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, and they're just saying just to add on. Uh, a related implant to these it's just it's a particular type of the implant that blocks the crown chakra then it, they call it the crown of thorns implant but okay. yeah so so just coincide with the crucifixion implants so yeah um, we thank all those beings that came and helped and if anything dark or inappropriate came through us to us or between us we like to have peace.